so basically what I wanted to do was take songs that are famous. Maybe they're not even famous. They're just from games we love. Hey, Alicia. Hey, DMC. Hey, Laura. Uh, and we're going to uh, just analyze them harmonically. Any questions that come up, we'll talk about that. Uh, but also, uh, we're going to see where it goes as far as inspiration improvisationally. So we're going we're gonna to be led by the music right now. The first thing I want to do, though, is have you guys tell me which Mega Man game you want to hear a song from. Okay, so we're going to go to whatever level is the first level in that game. I've heard Mega Man 2 is like the one, but uh, I want to take votes. Hey, Purple Pammy, hey there. Although I got to say, I'm kind of loving this intro music. So the first thing that comes to mind when I hear a song like this, let's start here. Oh, yeah. First thing that comes to mind is how powerful it feels, how it feels aggressive. Oh, so aggressive. Why does it feel aggressive? I know we're just diving right in. Um, so here's why. This song is completely diatonic. There is not one note that does not occur from the key the song is in. So the song is in C-sharp minor. So let's listen to it. I'm going to draw some stuff out, and we'll get right in. So, if you were to hear a note, we're just messing around with this intro until people come in. If you were hearing this intro, which is in the key of C-sharp minor, that's four sharps. Okay? If, I, if you heard this note... No, no, no. That's an A-sharp. We wouldn't want that, because that's not one of the sharps provided by the key. If I heard a C natural... Again, we wouldn't want that to make it sound powerful. This sounds powerful and rooted. So every note we're hearing is from this key. So if I were to draw out this key, and you don't have to read music to understand this. I'll say it verbally. So if you were to draw out this key, what's happening is you have seven notes. C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, uh, A, B. C sharp. So the notes we've left out are uh, we've left out D, we've left out F, we've left out G, we've left out B flat, and we've left out C. So these five notes aren't happening. These seven notes are. So as long as I stick to only these seven notes, the song's going to feel powerful like it does. Now check this out. You guys know me well enough. You know that I like to mess around. Oh yeah. So if I were playing this song, the whole song C minor, I'd probably dip into these notes. I'd probably pull pull some of those five notes in. So all those notes you heard that stood out, I played a C. I played an A natural. So if I use, um, or I'm sorry, an A sharp. So if I use an A natural, A sharp, which is B flat or a C, I start to step into this non-power center. But they wanted this song to feel like Mega Man, someone you can stand behind. He's someone to make you feel strong. So what are the chord changes in this song? Oh, hey, there we go. So that's another thing. So when I look at these chord changes, these are very, very common chord changes. This is like Lady Gaga's Bad Romance, you know, and a bunch of other songs. So we got, uh, we got this. This is what's happening harmonically. By the way, please feel free to chime in on the chat and ask questions and or say what the heck is happening right now. Okay, so... These chord changes, which are the core of this Mega Man intro, how do you know if a song is in a C sharp or D flat? Is it just a personal decision? Great question. Let's actually dive into that question, and then I'll go into how these chord changes are everywhere in music. Ed Sheeran did a whole thing on this, right? So how do you know if this song is in C sharp or D flat? It depends. So it's not purely a personal decision. So if I were to go, I want to make sure my switch doesn't turn off. Um, if I were to write it in D flat, here's what it would look like. Let's, let's look at the amount of flats. 
Usually it has to do with economy, right? It's trying to save space in our chart. Okay. So D flat has five flats. Uh, it is, um, I don't know where it is on the wheel, circle of fifths, whatever. It has five flats. C sharp has four sharps. So this is one of those keys where you truly could call it D flat or C sharp, right? But watch what starts to happen. If I say, oh, I want to play this song, this great song. Well, actually, wait, my brain is not working because that's not true. Oh, I wrote D flat major. Sorry, D flat minor. That's why this isn't making sense. We need, here's what we're going to do. Make it smaller. So we need too many flats. So we'd have to double flats because this note A in the key of D flat minor would be called B double flat. So what would end up happening is you'd be writing so many flats, right? You're down to here. You're going to start repeating flats so you can double other flats. So for example, this note, D flat, that makes sense. This note A is going to be called B double flat. This note E is going to be called F flat, right? So you're starting to create too many flats. There's too much chaos for you to keep track of all these double flats. So I'm just going to say etc. So there are certain keys that are enharmonic. For example, F sharp minor and G flat major, those two keys can be used interchangeably. But when you go into D flat, oh, thanks for the follow, Gonzalez. When you go into D flat major, C sharp major, that's just not one of those keys that you'd naturally write a key signature around, right? Thanks for the raid, everyone. Thanks, Tammy. Welcome to the Raiders. This is the first time I'm ever doing uh, a music theory of gaming stream. So what we're doing is we're taking questions from people and we're starting with Mega Man, this song. And we're talking about why it feels powerful. We're talking about why it makes you feel like Mega Man's going to kick some butt versus a, oh, versus a song like this that might... That doesn't feel very powerful, but... That feels powerful. Why? So we're investigating that. And the first question was, why is the song in C sharp minor and not D flat major? And the answer is D flat, I'm sorry, D flat minor. The reason is D flat minor is from the key of F flat major, which isn't a natural major key. So we'd have too many flats, there would be too many flats happening. So we call this C sharp major. And these are the notes we're allowed to choose from, these seven notes, right? These five notes are not in the key of C sharp. I, by the way, can we just talk about something? I wrote major, but I meant minor. So, crap. Crap. Uh, I blew it. Just kidding. Um, so, so these are our five notes we're not going to see in D, uh, C sharp minor. We're not going to see these five notes. We will see those seven notes. So, let's look at the song. This song is going to stay powerful, stay rooted, stay grounded by using only those seven notes. The second I start to pull in one of these notes, I think that sounds cool. It's very jazzy. These are nice things, but it's not going to make us sound powerful. And the composer for Mega Man figured, let's make him sound powerful. I mean, his name's not Nuance Man, it's Mega Man. So, all right, so. So there's an F sharp minor chord, which again is totally diatonic to C sharp minor. So we're charting out this song and we're going to talk about how these chords happen all the times in the songs you love, okay? Oh, thanks, Tammy. Okay, so A, B, C sharp minor for two bars. That repeats twice. F sharp minor. One, two, three, four. Four bars of that. Two bars of A. And then kind of C sharp minor, but it's like suspended. Okay, so let's disregard this second staff for the for the moment. Let's look at these first three chords that happen. So where have we heard those chords happen in music, right? Here's a really obvious example. Um, ah, that's too high. I want, I want, I want your love, I want your love as revenge. You and me could write a bad romance. Then it goes to E, which this song, uh, this song doesn't do. But those first three chords are in bad romance. I want your love, I want your love as revenge. You and me could write a bad romance. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh. 
caught in a bad romance. Oh, 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 oh. Da caught in a bad romance. Now here's the thing. I played the chords from this Mega Man song just now. Lady Gaga ends up doing a different chord before the finality of the song. So she goes, I want your love, I want your love, let's offend you and me, could write a bad romance. She resolves to E. Why doesn't Mega Man? Because they're trying to get you excited about this game. If you hear resolution at the beginning of your game, ah, ah so happy. Even Super Mario Brothers. Ah. It's, it still doesn't resolve. It ends on the five chord. There's no proper resolution because if you're playing a video game and it resolves the first second, your brain's being told, there's no challenge here. There's no game. It's over. Very rarely will you see a film score where a film, the move, the song opens up with, with true resolution. Even like Forrest Gump, you know? Uh, Yeah. It ends on a five chord, really. It doesn't go, uh, Forrest Gump, come on in. It's like, no, we want to have tension. Maybe at the very end of the movie we'll have a, and maybe then it'll resolve finally, right? So this video game needs to keep power, so it's not going to do the chorus of Bad Romance from Lady Gaga, which gives you that feeling of, finally we arrived. You know, maybe it wasn't a bad romance. This song is saying, let's stay minor. F sharp minor, A, B, C sharp minor, like sus kind of. A, B, C sharp minor. Right? So long story short, this is how you write a piece for a game called Mega Man, if you want to get excitable. Now, what do we do with this? This is my first ever music theory of gaming stream, so I'm, you know, kind of feeling it out here. But what do I do with these chords? How, how does that matter to me at all? So for me, it matters for a few reasons. One, if I'm improvising, so if I want to take the Mega Man song and go like this for you guys... If I want to maintain that power, I have one simple thing to do. A, follow the chord changes. A, B, C sharp, right? Follow those, C sharp minor. And two, make sure every single melody note I hit is from the key of C sharp minor. Those notes are C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, okay? As long as I hit one of those seven notes, stay away from these bad red notes, later on we're going to get into using them, it'll sound powerful. Because it sounds like I'm rooted in the world this composer wrote. Eventually he goes... Here's how, if I was singing a solo over it, I might go. Every note I just sang was in this key signature. It's pretty. My voice is like doing the falsetto, but the notes are from C sharp minor. Watch what happens if I hit one of these five notes. Watch how immediately the power gets stripped, right? I like this. I like it better, what I'm about to do. But just watch how it changes the, the feeling of the song. So, let's see. I might go... I sang a, a C sharp C. One of those red notes. Don't do it. Don't do bad. It's bad for you. Don't do it. But I did it. Well, that creates tension. Now, if this song weren't called Mega Man, if this song were called Tim Burton Man, hey, you play that new game they called Tim Burton Man. It's coming out live on the internet. You're going to love it. If that were the name of the game, I'd totally sing that C natural in the melody. But the melody notes they chose were diatonic. Now, here's the funny part. Recognizing this stuff is not hard. 
it, a lot of people think about music theory. Oh, it's hard. There's all these notes I gotta memorize. Eh, it's not hard. If, if you were four years old right now and you were my child, and I hope, I hope you are, okay? I need, I need some children, okay? Barren. That's a messed up joke. That's, that's a dark joke. That's not true. I, that's terrible. Delete that. Oops. Oops. Um, so if I, if I had a child and they wanted to know what color this guitar was, I'd say, oh, it's tan. Tan. And they'd probably be like, huh? You know how babies are. So, so stupid. No, I'm kidding. They'd be like, hello, ga ga goo goo, whatever. All right. At four, they would not say that. They'd like two. All right. I'm not a dad. I'm not a dad yet. Happy Father's Day, by the way. Um, but after, you know, a couple of times of me saying it, they'd probably go, tan. They'd recognize the color. Oh, man. Colors must be some easy thing for us humans, and sounds must be hard. No. It's just about recognition. So they'd say tan or brown, whatever. They'd say uh, blue. That light's blue. That's green. Because their eye is interpreting wavelengths on a visual spectrum. And then they call it that spectrum. They go, oh, that spectrum of light's green? Got it. Same thing with sounds. Now, to really complete this analogy, this note's A. This note's G sharp. P I don't have perfect pitch because I wasn't taught it young enough, but yeah, the perfect pitch is something you can develop just... They're hearing a frequency versus seeing it. You tell them the name of it, they can now recognize it. This is like across the board. Okay, so, but it also applies to qualities, okay? So you may not eat uh, agave and know, oh, this is agave. You may not know that. That might be too nuanced. A, G sharp, G, that might be too nuanced. But if you eat a cake, you know it's a cake. That's a cake. That's a structure. That's something your mind can get behind. It's not like, oh, what sort of flavor of sugar is this? It's, oh, that's a cake. A major, that's a structure. B minor, that's a structure. Major, structure. Major, structure. Half diminished, structure. Minor, that's a structure. Minor, major, seven. Long story short, when you're listening to songs like this, you hear the A chord, the B chord, the C sharp minor. I, don't, I haven't even played the melody yet. I pulled this song up three seconds before I started the stream. I've never heard it in my life. So recognizing these things is just something we have to make ourselves familiar with. We just hear a quality, we feel the structure, and we memorize it. Oh, here was the point I was going to make. I've never listened to Mega Man before. I love the game. I played Mega Man X like it was going out of style as a kid, and X2. Um, but uh, I guarantee you, I guarantee you the melody is only these notes. And here's why. When your ear becomes attuned to structures, to harmonic structures, that's a cake. That's bread pudding, right? You don't need to have perfect pitch. Oh, oh, is this agave from, from Guatemala? You don't need to have that level of nuance. You're just basic structure. When your ear becomes attuned to that, it enters you without you even knowing it. It's just like ultraviolet razor entering me right now. I, I, I'm not aware of it. So when you've done that sort of homework, which does not take long, a couple months, maybe, you've done that homework, internally the second a song plays through you you're like this song is diatonic this song only used notes from its key center it did not use the red notes so let's prove that i haven't even learned the melody and i guarantee the melody will be only those seven top green check mark notes let's see what's up ryu car welcome man we're doing our first music theory of gaming stream featuring mega man because most people agree mega man final fantasy Zelda? Mario? That's like the best music in video gaming. I wanted to start with something good. So, let's listen to the melody. It's played by the organ. Great. Great. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call out the melody notes I'm playing. Tell me if you hear me call out a note that's in that red line. You won't. So you can feel these things are diatonic. You don't, if you do the ear training homework. So, C sharp, B, E, D sharp, B, G sharp, F sharp, C sharp. Pause. I wish I could pause this music, but probably I shouldn't do it from the actual game because then I can't pause. So, C sharp, B, E sharp, I'm sorry, E, D sharp, B, G sharp, F sharp, C sharp. Now had the melody 
played one of those red line notes, it would have taken all the power away from the song. Again, it would have made the song more a song I'd write as an artist. I like Angular. I would have gone, I would have gone, Then I probably would have gone. So I'd have a lot of dissonance. I'd have some B flats in there, some C's, why not? But this song is about Mega Man. Power. He's powerful. We must use diatonic notes. What I've learned from music theory, which is why I love it so much, is that everything in life is relative. So I don't actually let me rephrase that. That everything in life let me say it one more time. Nothing in life is inherently bad. That's my. That's what I've learned from music theory. Oh, that note. Or sorry. Like, that's cool to me. It's not a note I should hit, but the shoulds and woulds, we remove that in music theory. This green check mark and the red X have nothing to do with good or bad. They have to do with these are the diatonic notes from the key. The red ones are not. So if you want to sound powerful and sound rooted and sound grounded, do the green notes. If you want to sound unique and different and like a guy who wears a scarf and an open button shirt on a Twitch stream about music theory, feel free to use the red notes. You, you dig? So let's hear the organ melody. Again, I guarantee it's no red notes. You can just feel it in your body. It's sort of like um, if I were to eat that cake we were talking about earlier, what if I gave you a cake? And I was like, hey, yeah, this is a great cake. It's awesome. Um, you'll notice it's garnished with uh, uh, cherries. Uh, oh, thanks, man. I love cherries on cake. It's awesome. Got a little bit of uh, a vanilla sweet cream, cream, you know, ice or a cream frosting on it. Wow, fantastic. And I have added some beef tartare on top. That's the red lines. You can do that artistically. I do that all the time. But it's like, wait, some, something's missing here. You, you bite into the cake, you're like, oh, nom, 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 nom. which people, you know, make noises when they eat. Oh, nom, nom, nom. Uh, you'd go, oh, what the hell is wrong with this? There's rotten meat in here. No, no, it's actually not rotten. It's uh, raw. But it's, yeah, put it in your cake. Well, I, I noticed that right away. Same thing with our ears. If you've developed this tool, right, which you can in like a, a week, couple weeks, a month of just recognizing that's blue, that's green. That's minor, that's major, that's major, that's minor, you know? So, let's listen to the organ melody. Let's see if I was right. Oh, I hope I am. I am. Here's the organ melody. Okay, well, I, I didn't hear it well enough. I mean... Okay, it's repeating. So it's... I am I messing up. Okay. The notes are B, C sharp, E, and D sharp. Are those in the top line? Great. So the melody is. Ah. And then it goes back to the whatever. Those notes are B, C sharp, E, D sharp. I rest my case. Dang it, Dad. On Father's Day, of all things, to disrespect me. Shout out to my dad. For all the love, kindness. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, so... um, Where do we go from here? We're done. I'm never doing another stream like this again. We finished. We graduated. Just kidding. We go from here is we figure out a way to put this into our music. So the most important thing for me with music theory, with trying to learn and grow, is, okay, so let's say a chef, to use the cake analogy, taught me about this cake that did not have beef tartare. It had tasty, delicious things. And he he gave me uh, this delicious treat, and I said, oh, this is awesome. I want to make this again. So he teaches me how to make it. 
I understand the structure of it. Oh, you used agave from Guatemala. Cool. You used sweet cream. Cool. I like that flavor. I'm going to go away. I'm going to make that cake again. So I'll practice it. Almost every single note I hit, except for one grace note here and there, was from that green line. Feels powerful. Feels like the Mega Man thing. I could solo over Mega Man. Using the Zane method that I was taught on this channel. Only use those seven notes. I didn't make a mistake because I heard the chords. I went, oh, the cake guy told me about this cake and just use these items and you'll be fine. So where do these red notes come in? They're a little easier to understand in the key of C major. Uh, who here, raise your hand if you've played a piano. I want hand raises. By the way, we have emotes coming and so many things coming. I, for real, I'm not, I've been working on stuff behind the scenes and it will be revealed very shortly. Um, raise your hand if you played a piano. Raise his hand. I love that. Not very well, but you've done it back in na Nation, uh, Vacamation. Oh, I love Beck. If you're a fan of Beck, let's hang out. Uh, almost, Phosphorus, S. Manny, Hand, 20 years ago. That works. Tammy, of course, who's an amazing piano player. Oh, my God. My followers who were in here before I got raided, please follow Tammy and Ryu, Car. The whole, all the homies. Okay, so we got some pianos in the house. So even that piano symbol, you can see it there. In that piano emote, there are three black keys. Has anyone here ever thought about how many black keys there are? Per octave? I bet you haven't. No, 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 no. We're about to. There are five per octave. Interesting. There are five red notes in this. I wonder if that's a coincidence. I wonder if Zane will speak to that. Yeah, I will. The black notes in the key of C major are our accidentals. Okay? So our white keys, we have seven of them. And we have five black keys. So that's 12 notes. There are 12 notes per octave. Don't even get me started on why an octave is not called a deca, whatever the heck 12 is. I can get started on that. We can talk about that. But that's just theory stuff that isn't really going to benefit us and make us make music moving forward. So this channel, this music theory of gaming streams, these ones coming up are going to be about giving you tools to make music more fun for yourself. Okay, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B, those seven white notes. Did I say a sharp or flat? Did I stutter? To quote Stanley from The Office. No, I didn't. What are the black keys? Uh, I, I bet one of them is a natural. Nope. No, they're accidentals. C sharp, D sharp, or E flat. F sharp or G flat. G sharp or A flat. B flat. Or A sharp. I mean, the accidentals can be called... It's all based on relativity to their note, right? So, like, this is A, so that's B. Oh, my, my it's mirrored. B flat. B, B flat, A, right? So this could be A sharp. It could be B flat. That's why accidentals have enharmonic tones. Enharmonic just means the same thing we're referring to, a different name. What is that cake? It's good. What is, what is that cake? It's great. We're both talking about the cake. Good, great, whatever. It's, it's about how it tasted good. Tasted correct to our mouth at that moment. In that given time for our pleasure. Thank you. So... The accidentals shift. So in the key of C, it's so obvious. The black keys are our accidentals. If you're soloing in the key of C major, okay, if this song were written in the key of C major, this would be so much easier for you. It's written in C sharp minor. What's our major key that that's relative to? E major. That's four sharps. We're in a whole different land now. But the bottom line is we still have five accidentals per major key, right? So... If I stay away from those, I'm going to sound like I'm totally soloing in the Mega Man vibe. Now, here's the problem. You get someone like me who loves jazz, who loves non-major scales. I love melodic minor modes. 
I love uh, superimposing Lydian or Mixolydian modes over my major key. I love all this. I love whole tone scale. I love diminished scale. I love lamp. Okay. It's a quote from a nice movie. I like diminished scales. I like harmonic minor. I like all these scales, but most people are going to want to stay in that major scale, okay? So let's see what happens if I take the scales that I love and start to superimpose them over Mega Man. Oh, double harmonic minor, don't get me started. Saxon, I like that. Appreciate that. Also, Chaos Dragon, who is moderating my streams, has been here the whole time. Okay. All right. Got that. <laughs> so... I'm going to use some of those red notes. Let's see what happens. All the chromaticism. You heard the times I stepped outside of the scale. I used a D natural to get to the C sharp. I used a C natural to get to the A, whatever. Um, so, and this is a weird song to solo over because you already have a melody. You already have the really pounding rhythm. So it's tough to find space to do some of these weird notes. But if I were to take this song and someone said, hey, play a rendition of Mega Man. You know, I guess this is the Legacy Collection, so I actually don't know which level this is from. But if I were to take this song, I could see myself really reimagining it. No, what was it? Was it? What was the melody? Shit, I forgot the melody. Let me hear the melody first, because I would find a way to make the melody have these red notes, have these non-diatonic notes. This is the main title. Good. Okay, cool. Thanks for the follow, uh, Beckhamation. So I might go. Uh, let's see. Let me tune this first. Great. So I'd go. Now the crazy part is, this new reimagined version of Mega Man, the theme song, has been fully diatonic the whole time. I've still been only using the green notes. 
except for a few moments like that. So if I wanted to reimagine and just go into this red land, right, these, these, these uh, accidentals, here's what would start happening. And it gets, this is where jazz, I think, turns people off, and I think it should draw people in. So I'm going to start playing notes. I'm not going to go, we're not going to play the idiom of jazz. We're not going to have that swing, that groove. We're just going to take the concept of free improvisation and see where it leads us. So you'll be hearing a lot of these red notes. You'll be hearing Ds, a lot of Fs. You'll be hearing a lot of Gs. You hear a lot of B flats actually. Um, uh, here, oh wait, Cs I mean. Right, you might hear a B flat. So you hear a lot of those notes. Let's see what happens. So basically, that's how you take the, the rudimentary fundamentals of a piece from a video game song. And all you do is get clear on what are the diatonic notes from this song, what's the song trying to tell me. It's trying to tell me power. Great. I can choose to exercise that power or not, right? I could keep it diatonic with those green notes or not. I could go into these red notes and create all these different things. Now, this stream is going to get more and more progressive and intense and all that as we continue to do them. The Tenuto interfaces with this website, musictheory.net. Again, I'm not sponsored by them. This is not like some weird thing. This just has rudimentary fundamentals. The most important thing to me of which is getting, oh, I just realized this audio passes. Yeah, audio follows videos on. So let's see if we can hear some stuff together. I don't know if we'll be able to unless I turn this audio on so give me a moment here we're going through black magic design we're adding that as an audio source it's coming through stereo fantastic let's see this may be a bit loud so let's turn it down to start and we'll do ear training okay interval ear training you guys hear that don't you raise your hand if you hear that because i'm seeing that you hear that laura loves tenuto tenuto is the best so, yep, great. So, we'll hear this interval. Wait, why is it skipping? I don't 
don't know what that's about. So what interval is that? Anyone got an idea on what that is? Ba -da -da -da. Okay. Basic interval recognition is going to be the start of our music theory journey, right? In colleges, they say music theory is written language. Aural skills, aural training, and ear training is the ear part. I feel that they are inexorably linked. So uh, this note is a minor, is a major second. The notes are A flat, B flat. Okay. Okay. So how do we recognize these intervals? There are a lot of ways to learn to do this. There are websites you can type in how to learn my 12 intervals, how to learn them. That's really the closest thing to that's blue, that's green, okay? Intervals are the building blocks. Then eventually we're like, oh, that's a turquoise guitar. And that's a uh, archtop jazz guitar. Like you start to build the blocks. The intervals are the most important one. So this sure sounds like the melody of Star Wars to me. Anyone else? Ba -da 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 -da. Uh, sounds great, Ling Ling Lift Guru. Thank you so much for coming here. No problem. Uh, where's the camera? Thanks, Lift Guru. Oh, it's over here. What was that? Where is it? There it is. Camera. Looking at camera two. Got it. Thanks for coming, Lift Guru. Just kidding. I like making jokes like that. My childhood was was around Do Re Mi. Oh, then you probably have fixed Do as part of your life. Fixed Do is where. C is always do. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So for an A flat major, you'd be like, fa, ti, te, do, versus do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. With, in America, we teach movable do, which sucks. We should have taught people fixed do, because then we'd all have perfect pitch. But I digress. So, um, this interval, it's a perfect fifth. How do I know that? Well, because the Star Wars song. That's a perfect fifth. So this melody, that first interval is perfect fifth in that song. So let's see if I was right. Oh, I hope I'm right. I know I'm right. Okay. Oh, that's a fun one. That's a very fun one. See, chaos is giving me hate, man. No, but the funny thing is chaos is being funny because chaos also has this command. <laughs> Watch this. I'm gonna go like ba 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 ba. Hey. Yeah, he's gonna get in a million point channel reward when he admits it. <laughs> he knows it. Okay, he knows it to be true. So, um, so that interval, uh, is a fun one. Oh, <laughs> devil's lettuce. Am I right? Um, which I think is a, 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 a euphemism for weed. Anyway, that's a tritone. I don't actually remember which song has that. But that perfectly splits the octave. Thank you, Lifiguru. So if you're looking at this, that would be... So C sharp to F sharp. C sharp to G. Great. So if I were to take that note, I would split the octave. Let's say it was on C, okay? So C to F sharp. That perfectly splits our octave. C, F sharp. Because then up here, my brain is not working. That's not C. I was looking at reverse. Here we go. Okay, let's, let's zoom in. C, F sharp. And then the high C is here. It's, it's so hard to do this in reverse. Okay. C, F sharp, C. This note is the same distance from this note, okay, going down, as this note is from this note, C to F sharp. So this is what is called our tritone. It splits the, yeah, oh, Black Sabbath, you're right. Good point, Fabio, thank you. It splits our octave perfectly. Some call it the devil's interval. Okay. I don't even know what to say about that. Uh, this is also... Um... Yeah, you're right. He's right. Fabio's right. It is Black Sabbath. Okay. Great. So that's our tritone. Let's go through a few more intervals. Okay, this one's funny. This is not a joke, but this is actually considered an interval. Here's why. If I have this pencil here and this guitar pick here, okay, they're about, I don't know, 15 inches away from each other, okay? That's a unit of measurement, that interval. That interval, that distance, right? About 15 inches. Now they're probably about three inches away. Now, 
they're in the same place. The same place is a unit of measurement. Yeah, they're in the same place. You wouldn't say, you wouldn't say, okay, they're 15 inches, they're three inches. Oh, they don't exist. They don't exist anymore. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? You'd be like, no, they still exist. They're just in the same place. This interval is the same note played twice. It's called a unison. Why does that matter? Because if I do this, or let's do it lower, and then my voice goes, la, these, this instrument and this instrument are performing in unison. La, that is an interval. If I go away from that interval, up a half step to a minor second, la, now we get dissonance. La, but this is unison. La, there it is. It's weird and dissonant and it's not. That's our unison. This interval is a unison. Okay. What? What? Raise your hand if you're not a music theory snob already. What does that sound like the beginning of? What song does that sound like? Think of a song in your head. Thanks, Enzo. Thank you so much. I'm so happy you're here. I'm going to be doing these streams every Sunday from my, starting at between 3 and 5 p.m. We'll do them for a couple hours. We'll have fun. Okay, Harry Potter says one. Oh, Akinar bringing the heat. Okay, there we go. Um, so Akinar already got one of the options. Mm -hmm. There's another one, even more famous one. Even more famous. So a Chaos Dragon, this is in an inverted version of Star Wars. So it's not Star Wars, because Star Wars would be bum, bum, ba -da 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 -da, right? As an interval. Oh yes, they're gonna be regularly scheduled. They are Enzo every week. Ba -da. There's a famous song that you guys are gonna be like, duh, sounds just like that song. Here's a tip I'll give you. That high note, sing it three more times in a row. So I'll do it out of rhythm, and this will kind of give it away. Dun, 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 dun. What song does that sound like? Because it, C sharp, F sharp could happen. Oh, oh, also Chaos Dragon's right, but there's a more famous song. So Akinar and Chaos Dragon, totally right. Thank you, Akinar. Here comes the bride. This is the most ubiquitous song in America, at least. I don't know if it's worldwide. Here comes a bride. You're also right. Oh, Christmas tree. Great, great ear chaos dragon or great Googling, whoever got this. Oh, there we go. Um, it's also, uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas. It's also, here comes the bride. But what interval is it? Perfect fourth. Now, what's weird about intervals is they're different going forwards and backwards, okay? If this interval of three inches were to repeat again, then we'd have like on a graph, you know, X and Y and all that shiz. We'd have, well, it's three inches to the left. Now it's three inches to the right. Okay. What if this were, uh, that, that doesn't actually help you guys. So never mind. Here's the point I'm trying to make. A perfect fourth, two, one, five. So one, five, ba, ba, da, 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 da. this note's going to be. Da, da, da. So it's C sharp to G sharp to C sharp. So C sharp to G sharp. Perfect fifth. C sharp to F G sharp. Same note. G sharp G sharp. C sharp to G sharp. Perfect fourth. This interval is different. It's more obvious when you go to like a minor second. Minor second. Minor second. Minor second. Minor second. It's like this is C C. Oh, sorry. Yeah. C sharp D, C sharp C. But this is a minor second, this is a major seventh. So the units of measurement get thrown off by, because really what's happening is minor second, major seventh. You know, we'll get more into intervals some other day, like deeper in that way. Long story short, perfect fourth. This is a perfect fourth. That's, I almost gave it away. What song does that sound like? Riddle me that, Batman. Okay, I love Batman. Okay, he's my inspiration and my truth. Right? I'm ready for a chaos funny command about right now. Okay, let's go. Let's make it. <laughs> Can I play it again? Yes. 
God, that sure does remind me of a film from the 80s. The only thing I'll give away is that the melody was written by John Williams. Oh, no, 70s. 70s. Right? Yeah, 70s. Right? Son of a bitch. Okay. Who answered it? Who got it correctly? Jaws. Yeah, Riza, you know what's up. So what else would I do in, in this app? So I'd eventually try to get into chord ear training. That's fun. So that's a very specific feeling. Remember we talked earlier about that's a cake and that's a bread pudding and that's, you know. So this is an item. If you're starting and you're saying, what can I do this week? It's starting to recognize the intervals, right? Um, okay, so. Oh, fantastic. What's happening here? Wow, this is good music. Oh, hell yeah. All right, let's analyze this together. Mega Man 2. How do I rewind faster? Alright, so you're gonna love. You're gonna love this. So I'm gonna analyze this for us and then we're gonna talk about what's happening, okay? I'm rewinding all as far as I can. Okay. Yeah, because. Yeah, B minor, C so C prime minor. Okay, so. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, E sharp. A sharp, D sharp, right? Let me just make sure, because we're in, oh no, wait, I'm an idiot. God, my brain. A major, key of F sharp minor. Okay, cool. So we're in F sharp, no, we're in F sharp major though, aren't we? Yeah, we're in F sharp major, no, I'm not an idiot. All right, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp. Why is my brain not working today? Okay, F sharp major. One, two, three, four, five, six. Should be six. Good. Oh, right, because you write it down here. Okay, cool. So, F sharp major. Okay? So the first chord is F sharp. Ready? Oh, did I rewind too much? Here we go. Fun. This is great. Okay, here we go. C sharp over E sharp. Um. Wait, it's not. Oh, it doesn't go to F sharp. It goes somewhere else. Sorry. Right, right. Oh, thank you for the follow thingy. So we're analyzing this real fast, except I'm doing it very sloppily because I'm holding this thing while I do it. C sharp over, E sharp, D sharp minor, C sharp, and then it goes to C half a minute, or G sharp over, I'll call that, yeah, G sharp over B sharp, that's fine. And then it goes to like something else. I think C sharp sus to C. Safe and right. <laughs> Are you an idiot or not? That's fine. You know, yeah, we kind of, I could, kind of should have done this in G flat major. I'm 
Nice G sharp dominant seven. Cool. Wait. Huh. How does that make sense? Oh, right. Okay, one more time. Sorry, y'all. goes into D. Cool. All right, so this intro song, here's what's happening harmonically. the D major land and we're having fun, okay? So what's happening in this song? So how would I use anything from this song to be able to write a cool song moving forward? Well, the first thing I would do is try to recognize the chord changes. So we've started with intervals in Tenuto. You know, that's like the homework for this week is getting clear on intervals, right? And then eventually chord qualities. And then eventually being able to transcribe a song like this faster than I did it. I did it pretty slowly, actually, because it was in the key of F sharp major. And... I never work in that key. I was like, oh, God, it's like one of those enharmonic keys where I should have written G flat, but I didn't, and whatever. So, uh, first thing I do is analyze the harmony. Now, this is something probably a lot of you will go, I have no idea what's happening. By the way, thanks for the follow, Superbad79. Thank you so much. Um, also, if you guys want to donate to the stream, just type it in here. I'll show you how to do it, or a tip, or whatever, to make sure I can keep doing these. You just do that thing. So, I don't know. Um, I need some moolah. I got some cash oil. You know? Um, so, uh, I analyze the chords. Chords come from major and minor keys as far as analysis, right? So, I go, what family is this from? Sort of like structure. Is this a four-walled house or is this a five-walled house? Are there rooms that have five walls? Yeah, there are. Are there octagon rooms? Yeah. What's the general structure of this, right? So I go, all right, well, there are seven chords in a major or minor key. We'll get over this another day, but basically, two chords always minor, three chords always minor, four chords always major, five chords always major, six chords minor, seven chords diminished, and then back to major, okay? So I'm going to figure out where do these chords live in the key of F sharp uh, major. Let's figure it out together. So I'll go one. Minor four. Ah, oh, we're borrowing from the key of F sharp minor. Cool. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Chaos Dragon. Go back to one. There's my four. Minor. By the way, we're going to finish this stream in the next 20 to 30, maybe 15 minutes. So make sure you guys let me know what you want my next uh, music theory of gaming stream to be. I could put up a poll right now. You know those fancy poll things? And that might be smart. Add existing poll. Could be smart to have a poll in here. Let me go to Streamlabs real quick. And we'll create a poll. Because I'd like to hear. I mean, we could do Aladdin. Someone said that before, but the problem with Aladdin is that was written by Alan Menken for a movie. So it's not really a video game score. But it's such a great score. But, but do I not? I don't know. Maybe I'll figure this out later. But I'd love to hear your ideas. Oh, Legend of Zelda is great. That's great. Yeah, Legend of Zelda would be fun, because I know that. All right. Sorry. Right. Wait, what? 
That's not right. Oh, right, E, right, right. Anyway, I have to learn it. I'll learn it from listening to it. <laughs> I don't remember exactly. Super Smash Brothers, F-Zero. Amazing, thanks, Cass. I, the straw pull is obviously better, but I will figure out the other stuff. Um, so, let's finish analyzing these chords. So this is very simple, actually. It looks very complicated, but it's not. This is one. This is five. Uh, figured bass is something we'll never go over, I don't think, in these music theory of gamings, but that's a figured bass terminology, which means first inversion, five chord. Six. Five. See? Five. Five. Right? One of them's inverted. One of them's not. You dig? Okay, cool. Uh, this is secondary dominance. So this is five of five. But again, needless to say, it's like, this is a major chord that's operating in a place it should not be. Oh, no, it's like the Matrix. You're not a piece of code that should be here. So it's uh, the five of the five, and then that's inverted. So it's five, well, first off, it's five, six of five, then it's five, uh, my brain. Why is my brain blanking on second inversion triads? Five six five six five. No, that's that's dominant seven. Five six five. Huh. I don't remember what. Oh six four. Yeah. Thank you. Five six four five. Again, won't matter for us. Cool five. And that's not really sus. I thought it was. So here's the most important part. We're looking for moments where this sort of stuff happens. And in fact, I'll make it a different color so you guys know what the heck's going on. So when it turns orange or purple, it's like, whoa-oh, we're borrowing from the relative minor. It's like in Legend of Zelda, the Link to the Past, when he goes to the underworld, everything looks the same as in the same place, but there are slight differences. Now her, her coat's purple. Now this thing is dark and there's a bat when there used to be a bird, things like that. So these purple things mean, oh, we're stepping outside the key. We're going to the parallel minor. Uh-oh. And then I'll make this color for secondary dominance. This color will be mm, orange. This is secondary dominance. Five, six of five. And this will be five, six, four of five. Okay. Yeah, dig. Okay, we're back to five. Back to the key we know and love. Red, purple, orange. Great. So then we're going to go here. This is the four chord. Notice how this four is major, whereas this one's minor. It's purple from a different key, from the key of F sharp minor. So four, five, uh-oh, secondary dominance. Five, seven of six. Uh, six. And then six. You'll find this happens a lot secondary dominant chords resolve to the key the chord they're trying to go to and then this really truly is just a key change now we're in d and that's the one chord okay so what how does this matter at all how am i going to use this musically here's how if i hear mega man 2 and i'm like dude i want to do a remix of it i want to do an arrangement of it uh first off i need to know the chords the structure the harmonic structure and how sometimes it steps outside <laughs> So that's the first reason that, that I want to analyze it, uh, or, or if I want to improvise, I want to analyze. The second thing that I can do with this is um, try to understand the composer. So when you hear the beginning song, it's like, oh, it feels so like ethereal. Mega Man 1 came out, power, power. Mega Man 2 came out, it's like, whoa, it's like a new land. It's not just... not just powers this feels like a story where is the story going what happened to Mega Man in, in this new world and then it's like things were great for a time they were so great but then some new stuff entered oh is it bad or good 
maybe it's good. I guess it's good. I guess everything's good in Mega Man 2's world. But then what's this about? Oh, maybe there's danger coming. Maybe there's danger coming, is there? And then... I know it's Pappy, but a different key. So a lot of times the music underneath these scores is truly telling you a story. You know when you like someone and you... Uh, let's go to this. Oh, wait, not that. You know... There we go. You know when you like someone and you're like, oh, man, I like to tell them. And then you tell them and they go, oh, that ruined everything. Because you told them you're so verbose. Let's say you... Uh, let's say you were... Um, you really liked them, but you didn't... You didn't want to beat them over the head with it. And they didn't have time for that. They weren't trying to hear your diatribe. Maybe you buy them flowers. Well, now, maybe they're like, I like them. You told them much more than your diatribe with those a single gesture. Right? So music in our video games, when we go, man, Zelda is so epic. Oh, man, such an epic game. Well, take the music away and look at the NES game. And truly tell me if you feel that game is epic. I don't think you will. Uh, oh, so so the point is, these musical things truly create the feeling of epicness for Zelda. You know, Super Mario. If you had never seen a Mario game before... You think it's quirky. It's fun. He's a fun guy. And we can do more Mega Man stuff moving forward, but long story short is watch a film tonight or play Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing has some great music, by the way. We could do that too. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, but um, I highly recommend uh, just considering and noticing how the music truly is affecting you. And then maybe bring it into one of these sessions. Tell me to look at it. Listen to it. A video game though. We want to make it gaming because we're on Twitch. But give me a video game and I'll and you'll and, and you know let me know. This song feels so happy. Why? And you'll look. You'll notice this song right here felt ethereal, felt magical. Well, anything that's purple is from the borrowed minor key. Anything that's orange is from a totally different major key. So that creates fun, spice, excitement. Watch. I'll play through these chords again. And whenever a purple chord happens, tell me if I ain't lying. Tell me I ain't lying. I don't know what the phrase is. Just trust me. You're going to notice that it feels like a mood has shifted. If I were to go... There's really no mood shifts. If I were to even go... No mood shift. Why? All those chords occur naturally in F sharp major. But this purple chord does not. Those orange chords do not. Purple will make us feel like we're in a dark underworld pulling us down to maybe sadness, maybe pain, whatever it is, you know, depending on the chord you that's uh, accessed. Orange chords will make us feel like maybe there's hope for a new future. Maybe we're going to a new quote-unquote major key, right? A new place, a new home. Minor, ah, your home got dark. Orange, uh, I'm sorry, purple, minor key. Ah, your home got dark. Orange? Oh, are we moving to a new home? Listen, just feel that. You'll feel it. There's our dark home. Purple. Here's our dark home. Purple. Okay, we're back home. Everything's fine at home. All fine at home. Are we going to a new home? Maybe not. Back home. Are we going to a new home? Back home. And now a new home happens. Out of nowhere. Key change, okay? So you're going to notice a lot of this stuff coming up in these music theory streams. This won't just be about, oh, no, it's soloing jazz. It'll be about the feeling you're having. Why is that happening? It's similar to when I watch um, astrophysics uh, sessions online on TV, you know? Do I know how to do any of those calculations? No. But when someone says, you know, a black hole can uh, has such a gravitational pull that no light can escape, and you cannot see any events past the event horizon because it's sucked up by the the light is sucked up by the gravitational pull. I don't know the calculations, but I'm very interested in that. I'll watch a documentary every night on that. 
My hope is that this music theory of gaming stream turns into a home like that. We're going to talk about why and how these things feel this way, and it's going to be never-ending. As long as you guys vote on a song, I'll do it and I'll analyze it for you in real time, and we'll talk about why. What I would love to see happen in these streams is, hey, this moment in this song made me feel this way. Why? That would be my favorite question. That would be my favorite question. Now, now, if someone from India asked a question, uh, uh, Nabioti, Zane, can you tell me a few apps for musicians on iPad? So uh, a few of my favorite apps, which I can quickly show before we get out of here, I use GoodNotes. I'm all about GoodNotes. Okay, GoodNotes is the app I'm using for you guys right now. I love this app. It's fantastic. That's my most used app. So when I'm transcribing songs for my band Evan and Zane, I do them in here. And I analyze it all myself. I learn the songs this way. I have uh, Orange or whatever means something. And what are the names of these? Let's go back. Let's find an Evan and Zane song. Bands, Evan and Zane, Halloween 2. So I'll have things like this. My charts look like this for Evan and Zane. Okay? So I'm all about good notes. Blue means I sing background vocals. Red, orange means the tempo of the song, which fluctuates in this song. Red means Evan sings it. Green means guitar riff. So for example, this song is... <laughs> Tribute, right? This is a tribute. Uh, uh, how's it go? Today, what a world we do is the next day of his destiny. And the moon is so really sundown. Or sundown's shine and the moon doth glow and the grass doth Right? So I have this on my staff, or on my uh, music stand. I don't even have a music stand. This is my music stand. I put it on my mic stand, psh, and then I read the music and play it. So Good Notes is the number one app, um, music app that I use. Um, I don't know what else I really use. I mean, these are ones I suggest. I've been suggested. Yeah, Laura, isn't it great? It's the best. Um, iReal Pro is good for live jamming to jazz stuff. Uh, Note. Oh, actually, I could use that in these streams. Because I could plug in the songs. So this thing lets you solo, which means... finish top 10 well i'm gonna i'm gonna give up before it gets too crazy guys thank you so much for being here today music theory of gaming is gonna be the thing there's no one else doing this on twitch and i want this to be the place for nerds all right guys i'll see you um uh when see you tomorrow tomorrow at 10 a.m i'll be doing my acoustic music stream so that'll be fun and uh we're gonna raid somewhere right now we're gonna raid Justine Violin again. She's become a homie through Discord, and we're going to raid her, and then maybe she'll raid me one day and go out Bob's your uncle. Uh, I hope you guys have a great, great Sunday evening, and I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. PDT for my acoustic stuff. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining from Tammy's stream, from Ryu Car's stream, and uh, here comes the raid. Put on your raid gear. Peace to you in the VOD world.